do you want a discount bull end from the from Australia? You know, those who are so special predators have a big end, those just amazing colossus of the underbrush. Do you want a discount one, which is both cheaper, easier to keep, a little bit smaller, a little bit less venomous and a lot, a hell of a lot less aggressive with you? Do you want that? Then welcome, my name is Ants Portugal and this is an ant care species guide on an ant species I cannot for the life of me pronounce the name, the name of. Harpegnathos venator And thank you for God Google Translate Latin Jesus Well, this ant species is, as I've said, very very similar to bull ants from Australia First of all, they have very similar appearances, they have very similar behavior Though they are cheaper in the market, easier to keep and honestly a lot more fun because there's not a genuine fear of death when you're near them. They do have poison, however they cannot kill you, unless you're allergic, which then, well, a bee can kill you, so who knows, just don't get them if you're very allergic to insects all the time. Which, by the way, is the rule of thumb with every poisonous end species, no matter, well, venomous end species, no matter how uh, strong or not their poison is. All right, so let's get into it. First of all, this species does not come from Australia. They come from China, China, India, and Malaysia. They are very interesting, and we'll be talking about them today. So let's get on with some conditions. They need tropical conditions to be alive. Uh, that means they need some higher humidity, that the lowest it should be 50 and it probably should be 50 in the outworld what is what is more important is nest part which should be somewhere along the along the, the, the Jesus along the, the lines of 60 to 50 now I will advise you to just completely ignore everything about humidity and just give them a natural setup with clayish soil which is where they do best well, the, the soil must not be, must not be too clayish. Um, if you know a little bit about keeping plants, you'll know that clayish does not mean completely impossible to plant on. You should be and you should actually do plant on the, the end setup, which is great to have a natural biodiverse terrarium for your ants and harpen gaster. Well, this species of ant does extremely well in a natural setup when compared to a man-made one. When it comes to temperatures, which is something you'll always have to keep in mind, no matter if the and the, the, the setup is man-made or natural, they're, they're, they can handle as low as 21, but they should not have to. They should always be above 24. They also can handle uh, somewhere in the hot sides of 30 to 31, 32, but they also shouldn't have to. You should keep them somewhere between 24 and 28. If you can, give them a gradient, especially in a man-made man setup, in a naturalistic one, they'll shift the soil around and make their own um, humidity and temperature differences, and they'll do it for you. You, have, you don't have to worry about it as long as you water the soil in an naturalistic setup. So, what do they eat? Well, that is a pretty interesting point because, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the ant. They have massive jaws compared to the size of the worker. They do not open wide like trap jaw ants, but they have a very, very strong bite. They also have a very potent sting, especially if you're an insect, it's, it's instant pain and subsequent death. And they use that to hunt. They also have well, they're just basically mini bullet ants. Uh, they also have extremely good vision, which means that when you enter the ant room when, or when you enter the vicinity of their, their setup, they'll actually look at you, which is... The first times they do it, it's creepy as hell because it's a goddamn ant. You know, a goddamn ant, a normal insect, should not be able to look at you. And, um... Yeah, I, I find it very creepy. For, I found it very creepy for the first times I've seen it, 
but then it just got normal. Uh, so, you know, you'll get used to it and they're just, you know, being such a powerhouse of an ant, they are excellent huntresses. They hunt like crazy and they actually seem to enjoy it, which is just probably derived from the fact that they're pretty good at what they do when they hunt. So we seem to think that they actually enjoy doing it when they probably derive no joy from the fact. Now, even though they do, they do not derive any joy, probably, you do, or at least you can, because watching them hunt, you know, cut up pieces of mealworms is interesting, but what's the best thing, thing to do is watch them hunt fruit flies, you know? Fruit flies, you can't really cull them before you feed your animals with it. So, uh, you know, trying completely defeats the purpose of feeding insects, which is to have a cheap, easy way to feeding your, your pets. And, um, you know, so most people do not call fruit flies, I don't think anyone does. And watching these ants jump around to catch the fruit flies is just an amazing experience. And, yes, you heard me right, they jump. These ants jump, which is just amazing, I mean, well, bullet ants, some of them do. And just as I've said, these are basically mini bullet ants. Uh, have I said bullet ants? I meant bullet ants, which is... Bullet ants are from the Amazon, bull ants are from Australia. Uh, they are all extremely good uh, predators, but they are very, very different. Um, they jump f somewhere between 8 to 10 centimeters, which means you have to pay very close attention to any leaves, branches, or decoration, which, which put them in jumping range of getting out of the outworld. So, a 10 Centi centimeter distance between any high point and the slip barrier of your outworld or naturalistic setup is very important with these ant species as they will uh, actively jump out if they see a landing point. You know, they'll jump when threatened and they'll jump to hunt. It's pretty cool to watch, it's not pretty cool when they use it to escape, so pay attention to that. Now, I've mentioned they eat proteins in insect form. I should also mention that they kinda enjoy their sweets and their fruits. They do not enjoy it a lot, they're not very omnivorous, but they need it. They need some sugars, definitely, and fruits are optional, but if you can, you should. A uh, varied diet is always important, but they will very much focus on solely hunting and consuming insects. Now, sizes, that's a very interesting point. Most bull ants are above the 2 centimeters. Now, uh, these ants, Harpernathor venator, uh, cannot get bigger than 16 millimeters. They'll stay, they'll stay between 14 and 16, both the workers and the queen. The queen is just a little bit bulkier, and you cannot actually tell a queen is a queen unless you're comparing it to something you know is a worker that is as well fed as the queen because they're just a little bit fatter the queens now when it comes to colony sizes uh, something that you know I think it's pretty great about the semi big actually poison is able to jump and species is that they do not get very large the species cannot get above the 400 mark and they usually stay between the 200 and the 400. You know, when they're growing their numbers, their, their numbers will plateau somewhere between 200 and 400, and they usually will not at all vary from what they have plateaued at. If they're well kept, they are actually a very hardy species when it comes to handling numbers, because the numbers are so low. Also, um, Workers actually live incredibly long lives for ants of this size, you know, a, of course a bull ant queen which is, well, a bull ant worker which is above 2 centimeters long and some of them, like, somewhere around 3 centimeters, they can live for over a year and something, but, you know, Campanotus with the same size as Arpagnaster venator will not live as long as a worker of Arpagnaster venator, which means when the colony has plateaued, you'll not see a lot of brood if you keep them in a man-made setup, but that is not to worry, that's just how things go. They'll still consume a buttload of protein, and you'll get to watch them hunt a lot. 
Uh, now, if you do not like the fact that they get so long numbers, uh, the solution for you would be, well, actual bull ants, but, uh, well, I wouldn't, because I don't want to die. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just, I'm putting a lot of fear into people, but that's not what I actually want to do. Bull ants can be kept and are usually just pretty safe to keep, but um, I really do not like do not like the fact that the ants are so dangerous and also they take a very long time to attain any significant numbers like three years for 50 workers from one species which is something I um, I would do if I could but I actually not, can't even because they're so expensive and come from such a far place which is Australia for me that I'm, and I'm in Portugal so uh, you know if you can and if you want to they're great and, but for most people in the world, Arpegnathor, this species, is a actually better counterpart to bull ants. So go ahead and keep them. And let me know any experiences you have, you've had with them in the comments down below. So, um, see you later, and bye-bye.